session. Uh, it is. Hello. Um, so, uh, Christine Murray, who's content superhero, has been leaping up changing platforms in a single bound for 20 plus years. She has created audio adventures for SF MoMA, MoMA, The Whitney, NFA Boston, the Smithsonian, and Museo Frida Kahlo, to name just a few. Her projects have received four news awards, a Glammy, and two NAI awards. So, please welcome Christine. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about today, thank you for that lovely introduction. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Is um, this idea of location awareness, which we've all been talking about for many years and um, we're all experimenting with in some way. Uh, how can this experience, if you imagine an experience where you're exploring a museum, you have a friend in your ear that's guiding you around. You are learning things about what you're seeing and you never look at your screen and it just works. Like, this is kind of the holy grail of what I'm interested in as an audio storyteller. So what I'm gonna talk about today is not about crafting, uh, not about technology or how to use location awareness to do wayfinding or that kind of thing. I'm interested in how location aware technology can change up the storytelling experience. So that's kind of the focus of how can we use this technology to create audio journeys that feel different than what is happening right now in a, in a traditional audio guide. And that's what I was doing at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Okay, am I just working now? Yay. Okay, so I did a project this past spring with the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, and uh, they had been out to SF MoMA and seen a lot of the location-aware audio walks that I had made at SF MoMA for their app and uh, wanted to create something similar for their, for their visitors. And they had this opportunity, they were given a giant, or giant, a large collection of, a private collection of impressionist and post-impressionist works along with some funding to house those works, to renovate a space for those works. And they used that opportunity, the museum itself, I can't take any credit for this, the museum used that opportunity to really think about fresh new approaches to visitor experience and they invested quite a lot of their own resources resources and time and energy. They have an amazing staff, an amazing IT team um, who, who got Apple to map the building. They, they, really, they, they really started thinking about different kinds of content experiences, different kinds of interactives that they could do. And they brought us in, Antenna in, to do these location-aware audio, audio journeys. So um, they're doing actually, by the way, a talk tomorrow about risk taking and in institutional culture. So I highly recommend that you, A, go visit the Nelson Atkins in Kansas City because it's an awesome museum and B, go to their talk because they really did some extraordinary things. So we had three partners in this, this particular walk that I'm gonna talk about. Um, so the Nelson Atkins, obviously, and then uh, they brought in Antenna to do all of the storytelling, all of the, the crafting of the visitor experience, and then Detour was the technology partner. So all the walks that I made at the Nelson Atkins actually live inside the Detour app. So these are immersive long form journeys that a visitor can choose. And what happens when you get to the Nelson Atkins is you either can download the Detour app and, and choose one of these um, walks on your phone, or you can check out a device at, at uh, the Nelson Atkins, which already has these walks loaded onto them. So I created one of these walks called Through the Eyes of Love, and this was an experiment to really explore intimacy and the personal connection that a visitor could have with art. And, and the location awareness was really key to making this work to making this feel really intimate. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the ways that we changed up traditional or conventional or all the tried and true ways that we all know and love audio guides. Um, so what happens for the visitor is that they get a menu, they choose this walk, they press that grayed out start button, and uh, they put their phone away. And the first thing that happens is that in this particular instance, a voice comes on that happens to be my voice. I just happen to be the narrator of this particular piece, but I not, don't usually do that. And the other walks that we made had other kinds of personalities. But the very first thing that happens that's different than most other audio guides and most other audio experiences that people have in the museum is that I, tell, I, t I say my name. I say, hi, I'm Christine. 
and I'm a writer, and I am a hopeless romantic, and today I'm going to talk about love. And you kind of opt out at that point and be like, oh, this isn't for me. Or you actually suddenly feel like you have a connection to this person that's talking to you who's going to lead you through the museum in a new and interesting way. So um, one of the things that location awareness allows you to do is that once I introduce myself and I am that voice, I can guide you through the museum because I have constructed at the back end all of these content, all these, all these stories that you're, we're going to experience together as you walk through these triggering points where the, where the content will be pushed to you. And what makes an immersive audio experience possible with location awareness is that you can trigger music or sound beds or ambient, ex ambient no sound to keep a person in that sound environment the entire time that they're walking through the museum. So everything feels connected and those that music track can loop so that it fills in the pace so that if I move quicker than you move, my music lasts as long as it takes me to get to the next trigger point. Your music lasts as long as it takes you. So if you stop and look at five paintings on the way, you're still lost in this sound experience, but you're getting to the next story that, you're, that, that the narrator is telling you. Does that make sense? So, so some of the things that location awareness, I've been making long, I've, I've been making audio for a really long time, just gonna date myself here, so I actually have made linear audio walks on cassette tapes. I was talking to Peter Samus about this last night. So, um, you know, we used to make long form linear, linear audio walks, but they were on cassettes, and the whole problem was the pacing, and it didn't really feel, felt a little canned, and then of course there was just all this desire to do random access and have the visitor be in control, have agency over their own experience. So, but now we've kind of come full circle, but there are things that a linear walk can do now with this technology that it couldn't, that it, I know this, that you couldn't do on a cassette tape. And so right now it feels like this fresh and new form of exploration, if you can create something that hands your visitor off from location point to location point that's driven by story where the movement is actually motivated by the narrative that you're telling rather than just saying now we're moving to the next painting there's a reason why so the, this location or technology that's pushing content constantly at you allows your eyes to be up and engaged in the space all the time you never deal with your device you just turn it on and you go um, and so that allows for this long, rich storytelling. You can ha create arcs where there's a beginning and a middle and an end and like, you know, characters arrive and characters leave and characters can come back and you can make surprising twists and turns in the stories that you're telling as you're handing people from content point to content point. Um, and the thing that I really love about this is that the wayfinding in this gets embedded in the story. So for example, in the Throughs of, Through the Eyes of Love walk that I narrated, I'm constantly saying stuff like, oh, let's go over here, I wanna show you my favorite painting in this gallery. And then uh, it's over here on the left and you have to go past that like big chandelier and then you'll see it right on the right. It's suddenly, you're, you're just listening to the story and kind of doing what you're told. You don't even realize that you're being moved through the museum. So this Through the Eyes of Love walk actually starts um, in, the, uh, in the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist galleries, but it takes people all the way through the museum, out into the lobby, down, down a set of stairs, in a whole nother space that has modern and contemporary art, through several galleries in there as well. So people at the end of the walk don't even realize that they have been moved through a third of the museum because they've been so lost in the story. So the other thing I want to talk about is this idea of real-time surprise. Um, so changing the voice, like I said, sort of changes everything. It gives you the opportunity to use subjectivity to move people through a space using, you know, triggers. And it, the difference is in a cassette tour, in a linear long-form tour in the past, you would have said, like, when you get into the next gallery, you'll see a bench. Let's have a seat on the bench which is nice and it's friendly and it's casual and it feels like you know the narrator is there with you. But that's a very different experience than walking into a gallery and walking past a bench and the narrator suddenly saying, oh, let's sit down here, this is my favorite view. So it's a, just a, it's a completely different experience that makes the audio feel customized, it makes it feel personal and it makes it feel spontaneous and in the moment. 
So I'm not going to go through everything on this slide, but this I'll share my slides too when we're done. But these are some of the differences between a conventional audio walk and what a, a conventional audio tour and what location awareness can give you. And the, the main thing I would say as a writer and a producer of audio is that in the tyranny of the 90 second audio message that we all know and love, um, there is, a, there is a convention around storytelling, which is you start with the object. You're standing in front of the object. Start with the object, be specific, and then you can pull back if there's a larger theme that you might find that you can tease out in 90 seconds in that object. With this kind of storytelling, what location awareness gives you is the idea, is the ability to do something that's on a big theme and the objects reinforce the stories that you're telling about this big theme. So it really feels like you're listening to a podcast while you're walking through a museum and the visuals are supporting the stories that you're hearing. Um, this is, I just wanted to, nuts and bolts wise, the tools that I used at SFMOMA and at the Nelson Atkins are, are the detour platform. So they have a backend content management system that allows you to, as you can see here, there's a map of the space. You identify trigger points. Those trigger points are assigned to WAPs in the building um, that launch the content. Um, and then uh, you'll see my script here actually has the ability to edit the audio that's a part of the script. So I was actually editing a lot of this on the fly as I was walking through the space. So this is a little bit like Google Maps and Word and Pro Tools kind of had a three-way and made this baby. Um, the, the, the editing software, uh, we edited all of our audio in um, Pro Tools and then imported it because the, the, uh, the audio editing program at the time was not very developed. It's, it's a little better now. Um, so I'm really interested in this idea of the immersive flow state, like when a visitor actually gets lost in the story. And that was really something that the Nelson Atkins had as a goal. And so as a writer and as a producer, I'm th you're sort of thinking three-dimensionally. What does it feel like to be in this physical space? What are the visual cues that I have? It's not just about what's inside the frame of the painting, but actually the sunlight that's streaming through the window and the people that are in the way. And all of those, like, you suddenly get to acknowledge the environment that your visitor is standing in because that trigger point is, is going to push content that's specific to that actual space. Um, so that kind of choreography, the technology, of course, is like essential to making it work. And people have done this with beacons. I, we did this with Wi-Fi triangulation. It really depends on you know the, 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 the institution and your resources. But the more specific that you can get in that choreography and that real-time, real space way, the, the, the more surprising and fresh your audio walk will feel. So we did lots and lots and lots of walking through the space. And the Nelson Atkins, by the way, was an incredible partner. So you'll see in this slide here, when we started the project, they hadn't really built the space yet. And, I, and one of the things that I said was, gee, lo the word location aware really means that I need to be in the location in order to be aware of what it feels like to have this experience. So they actually had, all, they, they made all these facsimiles of their artwork and they hung them on the wall so that I could feel what it was like to be in the space so that I could write to that experience for the visitor. Um, and then we tested and we tested and we tested and we went back with a voice draft, we went back with a full mix, we, we edited on site, that's me with my computer actually editing audio while I'm listening to it. So lots and lots and lots of testing. Thank you. Um, and then of course, no matter how much you test, the, you know, you just can never underestimate the, the ability of somebody to get lost. So it just, it's really important to test on people who don't, don't know what you mean. Um, so here are some of my tips for you if you're thinking about doing this, in, just in terms of making these long form audio journeys. Definitely invest in more WAPs than you think you need if you're using Wi-Fi triangulation because in all the experiences that I've had so far, there's always some dropout zone and the minute the technology fails, the flow state goes away. 
um, look for those opportunities to create that, to choreograph those real time moments. Like if you are in a space and you're walking by a heating vent and it always blasts too much heat, say that in the walk when the person is walking by that heating vent. The beautiful thing about location awareness is that you can be that specific about that place that that person is standing in. So use that material whenever you can. Um, my experience has been in all of the walks that I have made for Detour, for, for SF MoMA, and for the Nelson Atkins, use the subjective, use a point of view, have opinions, be a person in, in, the, in the visitor's head. It makes such a difference. Um, budget and plan for a longer development cycle with lots of walking in the space because that's what makes the subtlety of that magic um, work. And then this is actually, this back up your work, this is a tip from Sandy Goldberg who has also made some of these long form, uh, or some of these uh, location aware audio walks. Back up your work onto an alternate platform because when you're using a new piece of software it's really unstable and who knows how long it might be around. And so um, we've already had some issues with like different versions of as the software is evolving. So just back up, back up, back up and test and test and test and test again. Um, so these are my my big takeaways for you guys, if you're going to make one of these or if you're thinking about this, it's not the same as the user having agent having, you know, it's not the same as a user using location aware technology to find their space, find their way through a space. This for me is about making it a journey. So use the space to support the journey. Use the space as the platform for your story. Use the moment, the moments that you feel, the moments that you know you can choreograph, use the moment. It's all about this idea of space, time, and point of view. So, and test, 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 test. We hear that at every MCN. It's true. It's my lived experience. So, I, uh, any questions? <laughs> or I can be at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>